well, it took us a while, but we're finally building back up this this three liter for a Ford Contour. Uh, there's a few give, giveaways on the block that tell you it's a three liter. Uh, biggest thing on, on this block, at least, it's, it's casted right there, three liter, underneath where your your Contour motor mount would be. Um, and then next to it is this you know, 2000s Fomoco font. <laughs> Um, but the, these three liters, they, they don't normally come with this PCV thing. They come off. They come with a block off plate. You simply unbolt it, remove it, put in your contour one, and then with your engine mount, similar thing. They don't put anything here, but all the bolt bolt holes are there for it. Uh, but in this, with this engine, the bolt holes were small, smaller than what they should have been. So, uh, these bolts have 13 millimeter heads. So I think they're like, they're M, M10s, M12s, um, but the holes themselves were only m 8 so I had to drill them out longer and deeper, and then these bolts were also too long, so, so after I tapped it, I found out that these bolts were too long, so I, I had to nip them down, and they were still just a tiny bit short, uh, so I, I put in some grade 8 washers, and now, now it's held on. Uh, like it was on the 2.5. Now most of this video we will be talking about the conversion go, you know, going from the 2.5 to the 3.0. Three, three oh. um, it's, it's, it's not too crazy, but there are, there are a few things to keep track of. Uh, very, very important things. Uh, but let's, let's take a look over here so we can see what the big difference is between the 3 liter and the 2.5. Now the, the stroke is the same between these engines, but bore is the big factor. Here you can see I have uh, this blue head gasket is from the 3 liter, and that black one is from the 2.5. So when I overlay these, you can see that the bore is a whole lot bigger. Uh, I'm not able to get my block side to side, but it's it's quite quite an obvious difference between them. Um, and then I have the other other two head gaskets over here laid on top of each other. Um, but yeah, the, the the bolt holes for the heads all line up, all the coolant passages line up. Um, <clears throat> but the oil channels is where you'll see some differences. We'll start here, over here. You can see this this blue head gasket has a oil send send right here, but the black one below it does not. But this one on the back side they both have. For the three liters, at some point in like 2001-ish, I'll write it down in the description, they added this oil send on the three liters going from the block to the head. Uh, this other head gasket, it's only the one. There's, there's no, no additional oil send passages. Now also with the three liters, they added an oil return. Two of them, in fact, uh, one on each head, you can see it's, it's this little funny shape there that they added on. And then over here, same thing. Those were added. Now I can show you here on the block, and because I have my heads handy, I can show you what's going on here. So these are both 3 liter head gaskets, of course. I'll grab this one. We'll set it down on top of our head here the way it would be arranged with the engine assembled. I grab my other one here, set it down like the way it would be assembled, and now you can see all the big differences here. So there's that oil return. We can look on the block and confirm it is an oil return. There's, It's not pressurized. Um, it's just oil that's sitting loose inside the heads to help return down that hole in addition to these two that all 3.0s and 2.5s always had. Now these were, were added at some point in the, into the 3 liter. No 2.5s will have those as far as I'm aware. And then that is the one oil send passage that we have to cap off. The one inside the, the timing compartment on the, on the right head or the the, the forward part of the block, that one you leave open. This one you cap off, 
This one down here you leave open. Now some people weld these shut. What I chose to do was I actually th threaded it and then I inserted this little Allen slug and when I did that I put some high temp Loctite on it as I ran it down. Um, I bottomed it out and turned it back just a little bit in case for whatever reason I need to get that out I can I can do so because when bolts are bottomed out in the future they don't really want to come out so uh, but I didn't want to do anything permanent to the block I wanted everything I do to this to be completely undoable uh, just in case you know is because you never know and another thing is I'd hate to do something twice uh, so what I did for the the oil returns you can see that that's where one would be and that's where another would be what we had done is these two five heads have nothing here all this here is missing so we filled that in with aluminum weld we made it nice and thick and then we machined it level with the whole rest of the engine or with the whole rest of the head surface um, so now when we bolt down this head this part of the head gasket will be crushed and nothing will fall inside that oil return because otherwise if you forget to to either weld onto the head here to cover that hole or if you forget to weld weld into the block here to cover that hole you will have debris you know dirt water whatever going into this hole and that goes straight down into your sump you do not want that and then you have the same issue going on on the other side all that debris water everything else goes right down in that hole straight into your oil to be picked up by your oil tube um, and we did the same thing on this other head here next to it, the same spot, that that back corner. Um, and like I said, I, we could have welded the the passage in the block shut, but I didn't want to do that. I was kind of concerned about warping the deck surface uh, or filling that area full of slag. Uh, part of the issue was is we'd only just noticed this after our rotating assembly was was installed. So I yeah, really did not want any slag getting down inside my cylinders or the, the oil passages or the coolant passages. I cannot have that. So we just welded it onto the head. That was, that was a whole lot easier. And it was, it was a little bit easier to you know, machine out when we were done. Um, and over here you can see that, that uh, added uh, oil pressure passage. And that you'd normally have to cap off somewhere so like I said we just did that here and that's pretty much all you had to do to use these two five heads on the three liter block um, but it they say when you use the two five heads on the three liter block you, you raise your compression to like a 11 and a half to one which is great uh, the, the only thing I I don't like is that the valves are a little smaller than the three liters uh, but, but everything else I'm quite fond of. So someday if these heads ever come back off, I might take these out to a machine shop and have them install three liter valves because they are a little bit bigger. And that would, that would enable us to enlarge the port some too. Now to the rest of the engine. Um, here's, here's a few things you need to know of. When you're swapping a three liter into a contour, this is what you're up against. Uh, this is more more or less the the Taurus timing cover. Uh, you'll you'll see these on almost every Taurus. I'm not sure if the Escapes had these or if the other three liter cars had these or not. I know all the Tauruses are like this. Uh, you see, there's that raised portion for the tensioner. It sticks out a bunch on the contour. It's pretty recessed, and on the opposite side. Now, two two covers are completely interchangeable. There's just a few things to keep mind of. Um, the, the contour one has that power steering pump in the center area there. This one does not. Uh, it's, it's got a power steering pump elsewhere. Maybe it bolts onto here. I'm not too sure. It was, it was gone when we got the engine. Um, now the crank shaft position sensor is the same spot on all the two fives. It's on that right side. And then on the three liters, it's always on the left. And it's, it's real apparent when you look at these timing plates. Uh, you'll see that every single one for the 2.5 and the 3 liter, 
they're exactly the same. You'll see this on both motors, and it will always have two key slots. Now I took the liberty of labeling for them for you. The one with the the gap, the gap in the trigger uh, trigger post is for the two five. The one opposite of that is for the three zero. That is because when you put when you set this on your engine and you turn it around, when this lines up with with that, you're at top dead center for your two five. Now over here, you can see that this doesn't line up with our sensor coil. So instead of turning the crank over 180 degrees, we turn the, the disc over almost 180. Now your crankshaft is still in the same position. You use this keyway now, but now your gap over here is with your sensor coil. So the engine always knows it's, it's coming upon top dead center at that point. Help you visual, visualize this. This is what we're looking at. I have number one at top dead center. We'd, we put our plate on. I'm using the three liter hole so the sensor is over here and it's at um, it's lined up with the three liter sensor. I flip this around. Now this works with our 2.5 timing cover where the sensor is over on the right. It's, 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 it's nothing too crazy. You know, just something to keep in mind. Um, then one of the last things I wanted to talk about are the valve covers. The valve covers are interchangeable as far as I can tell. Uh, you can use either on either either set of heads. Uh, but the biggest difference between these is the three liter one is coil on plug, so it's got these additional uh, bolts to bolt onto your your coil packs, your three coil packs, while well, the contour one does not. The contour one also has the mount for your secondary um, runner butterfly control valves. Um, th that module. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This is this is the rear valve cover. So this mount is actually for the coil pack. Um, on the front valve cover, this critter. This is where your intake the manifold runner control unit would be depending on the gear of your car, it would be right in this area on the forward valve cover. On the rears, uh, this is what you're up against. I don't know if you can have coil on plugs with the with the contour uh, ECU. That's that's beyond my knowledge, so to keep things simple, we're just using all of our 2.5 hardware um, and electronics. So we're using our 2.5 valve covers, our 2.5 two um, timing cover, this is a must. You cannot use that. It will not fit in the car. Uh, and then we're using the 2.5 heads because then we can keep our 2.5 intake manifold. And then I want to mention the intake manifold. I'm not sure if it, if the 2.5 one clears the 3 liter valve covers. That's something you want to look into. Um, I know it will clear this, this rear one. I don't know if it clears the front. I can look into that and I can write it down. Uh, but from your 2.5, you also need your harmonic balancer. The one that's in, like, the Tauruses, it's a, a two-piece unit like that and extends out pretty far because the belt it has has to be in line with this tensioner pulley. So it comes out way too far for anyone to use on a contour. So you have to get it back down to this. I should say the oil pans are a little different, too. Um, they're, they're pretty similar. And capacity-wise, I don't think they're much different. Uh, if they are in dif if they are different at all, I have it's it's nothing major different between them. But I can figure out some time we can go from there. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover for you. Uh, <laughs> just a few things to uh, remember before you start diving into you know doing a hybrid engine. And one last thing, if you're using 2.5 cams, don't forget you still need your 2.5 um, crank sprocket and your 2.5 chains. The 3 liter chains, cam, uh, cam sprockets, and crank sprockets all have a different prof tooth profile from these 2.5s. It's very important. But we can stop here now. I've covered pretty much everything. And uh, yeah, we'll keep banging this out.